Welcome. This is uh, lecture 33. In this, we give a proof of net normalization lemma, uh, which is the following. Let so this is uh, uh, let's recall uh, what uh, net normalization lemma was. So theorem. This is net normalization. lemma, okay. it says that if R is a finitely generated K algebra, K field, then there exists some finitely many Z1 through Zd inside R, algebraically independent over K. such that uh, R is finite over, is a finite algebra. In other words, as a module, it is finitely generated. Finite algebra over this subring, which itself uh, is a uh, polynomial ring because it's algebraically dependent. Okay? So we saw a proof of this. Uh, last time for algebraically closed fields, uh, for infinite fields, where we did a uh, change of coordinates and the change of coordinates ensure that uh, some, uh, some element in a, uh, some relation among the generators of R can be written uh, in, a in a monic polynomial form. Okay. And once it can be, once a relation among the generators can be written using a monic polynomial, it says that one of the generators is integrally dependent on the other and hence the morphism is flat uh, is finite and then using that uh, we can do uh, we can bring the number of generators down okay. so that was what we did last time so here also the idea is the same but the proof is a little bit more involved uh, and we will see an example after this proof that if the field is finite uh, one cannot really uh, there are situations where one might not be able to find uh, linear change of coordinates, like the one la that we did uh, last time. Remember that was just yi went to some yi minus some appropriately chosen constant from k times yn. Okay. So that would not be possible. Okay, so now let's uh, uh, give the proof in the general case. Okay. So it's the same idea. We uh, so let's write. Let's say R is k little y through little y n, okay? and think of R uh, as a quotient of of uh, the polynomial ring in that many variables y one through y n, okay, and uh, if uh, uh, this is an isomorphism. If the kernel is zero, then there is nothing to prove. So all of this is the same approach as from the last time. If the kernel is zero, okay, then there is nothing to prove because then then uh, this itself is a polynomial ring and it is finite over itself. Okay, so that's nothing to prove. So then, therefore, assume that. Therefore, assume that there exists some polynomial f in the variables y1 through yn in the kernel, non-zero polynomial. Okay. So the idea is again to change coordinates that, so that f takes the form of a, a monic polynomial and that would introduce a relation of little yn over some combination of the earlier ones, not necessarily the earlier uh, y's. Okay. Okay. So now let's, uh, okay. so suppose, uh, let's write f as some sum of some coefficients 
alpha uh, uh, a indexed by some uh, n tuple x1 uh, e is just this n tuple e1 through en. Sorry, y1 through yn. Yeah. Uh, these are the variables. Okay, uh, f is of this form. Okay, so uh, yeah. So now we do. Uh, 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 we would like to do a change of coordinates so that this polynomial will take the form of a monic polynomial with uh, with coefficients coming from uh, I mean monic polynomial. And the uh, coefficients of lower powers of yn may come from the earlier variables. Those variables, okay, we'll, we'll change uh, them a little bit. So the change of coordinates that we will try to attempt is a change of coordinates. Okay. We write yi star as yi minus yn to the ri, okay, where these are integers, positive integers to be decided, positive integers to be determined. Okay, and we will see, uh, uh, we will see what we have to determine. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so then a monomial of the form y1 to the e, e1, y2 to the e2, up to yn to the en, okay, under this change of coordinates, this is the same as y1 star plus yn to the r1 to the e1 and so on. So there is a change up to this point, yn minus 1 star plus yn to the r uh, R n minus one to the E n minus one, and then uh, so one more term, y n to the E n. Okay, so this is uh, this is the expression that we get. Okay, so this is this will have a term. So just this monomial itself will have a term which looks like y n to the E i R i plus so this, for this monomial, this term here would be, uh, this monomial will get converted into some polynomial where this coefficient here is 1 and then uh, some lower degree terms, lower degree terms in yn coefficients from the other variables, y1 star through yn minus 1 star. Okay, here the coefficient is from k and it is 1. Okay. So this uh, looks like this. Okay. So now suppose, so recall that f was some, some coefficient times this one. Okay. And uh, we can assume that a i is a non-zero, otherwise they will not appear in the sum anyway. Okay. So we would like to give these choose these ri's so that each of these monomials will give a term and the, this, monom this uh, monic term that we get here with unit coefficient are distinct so that they will never cancel each other and therefore f will get transformed to a, a monic polynomial. Okay. So this is just to ensure that whatever f gets uh, transformed to has uh, uh, leading, uh, uh, if you write it as a polynomial in yn the leading coefficient is, uh, is a unit. Okay. So we want to choose Ri. So one way to, uh, so we want uh, to ensure that ensure that f is transformed into a polynomial let's say g of y1 star through yn minus 1 star yn that is monic in yn. Okay. So this is what we want. This is 
the, the idea is the same from the pre other proof, but it is just one requires a little bit more work to handle this. Okay. So one way to ensure that would be to ensure that all these degrees are different for each one of these a i, uh, each one of these e, okay, where a e is non-zero, th this sum is different. Okay. So one way to ensure that would be. ensure that would be to choose Ri Ri such that the sum this collection is distinct I mean uh, consists of distinct elements For all, I mean, this collection is, I mean, this is collected over all E such that uh, A e is, is non zero. Maybe, uh, sorry, I'll just rewrite this set in a second. Okay. So, this collection of E i R i, okay, where E is chosen such that A e is not zero because that only they will anyway come into consideration when we uh, uh, when we uh, look, uh, expand y okay. those are the only terms of f okay so uh, distinct elements okay so i mean one easy way to do that would be okay, choose ri to be s to the i for some large integer S. For example, S is bigger than the degree of F. Remember the degree of F is the maximum of sum of E i such that A E is 0, it is non-zero. So these are the actual terms appearing in it and in that the degree is the largest, uh, uh, largest term that we would, we would get, uh, the sum is the largest. So if you choose an S large enough then each one of these e i will be strictly less than s and then uh, if you take something of the form uh, let us say some b 1 s plus b 2 s squared up to some b n s n uh, this term will be uh, for various values uh, I mean, every integer uh, which will come as uh, in that form. Uh, uh, if the this, this is different from uh, with this property, this will be different from um, uh, some other b prime one uh, s plus b prime two s square and so on. Okay. So this such similar term. So the various uh, these sums will be distinct elements, and hence in this sum when we expand out uh, expand out this sum, precisely one of those terms will will dominate and it is why uh, uh, I think uh, yeah sorry just one I said R i uh, n i uh, R n by definition is so here sorry I should. So sorry I, just one clarification here. Uh, so this is sum is over 1 through n and R n is 1 record that is how the sum will come it is E n plus R n E n minus 1 and so on ok. So, R n is so just keep this in mind and uh, yeah so one way to ensure this would be to, to, to choose a very large s and then choose R i to be s to the i and then we will get all of them to be distinct and exactly one term in, in the terms of f written, written as y's exactly one term will win when we do this and therefore that would be the uh, that would ensure that uh, f is a monic polynomial ok. So, without loss of generality without loss of generality f is of the form y n to some large degree some plus lower degree terms in y n ok. So, therefore, uh, so what do we have? We have k y 1 through y n minus 1 okay, and 
yn. Okay, so now we may as well call, we, don't, we can drop the star in the notation, we may as well call them y1 through yn. Okay, so, and modulo this f. Okay, this surjects onto r. Okay, f is just in the kernel, so this surjects onto r. And in this ring, y is uh, integral over the subring. So yn, image of yn of yn is integral over uh, the subring okay. k little y1 through little yn minus 1 of r. Hence, it suffices to prove the theorem for a smaller ring and then we can uh, uh, bring it down till we actually get that there is no relation among them. Okay. So this is the, uh, this is the proof uh, of the general version of the normalization lemma. And uh, so uh, we will uh, prove, uh, so remember, uh, so um, let's do an example and then I will come back to this. Uh, question about finiteness and how uh, I mean, how to use it or why is it relevant. Okay, okay so here is an example. So in the proof, uh, in the first proof of Nathan normalization lemma for arbitrary, uh, uh, for infinite field, uh, we observe that uh, a linear change of coordinates would work. So here is an example where linear ch change of coordinates won't work in the proof. So later after we understand dimension a little bit, we will try to come up with an example where there is no, uh, the algebraic independent elements are not even linear. So that will require a sum of uh, understanding uh, uh, to, to be able to calculate something. So that we will revisit after we understand dimension a little bit better. Okay. So here we are taking a polynomial ring in two variables over a finite field of two elements. And then we look at the ideal x, y and x plus y. And so it is and then we ask for its associated primes, it's, it's expected, I, it is just, uh, 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 so this, this, is, this is the command, Macaulay command to compute associated primes. Okay. So it's a, as expected because these are uh, irreducible elements, they are all distinct primes and uh, if you take a product like this, uh, it will not have any other associated primes. Uh, it requires a little bit of thinking but uh, in a polynomial ring one can show that. Okay, so we would like, so uh, in our proof, we changed the, f the, init the first n minus 1 variables and then we changed uh, the, we didn't change the last variable. So we would like to change uh, x but not y. Well, this is a finite field uh, and x has to go into a, uh, x has to go into a non-zero vector, non-zero linear polynomial something of the form x plus some alpha times y. Remember that is what we did in the proof. But there is only one choice then. x. So we want to define a change of coordinates. So change of coordinates is a ring homomorphism. It's a ring automorphism. So there's only, if you want to keep y fixed, there is only one choice and x has to go to x plus y. Okay. So this is a map from r to r. Uh, x goes to x plus y and y goes to uh, y fixed. Okay. And we ask what ha what happens to the I, to i. Okay, so uh, uh, we are trying to find uh, whether a linear change of coordinates uh, uh, of this uh, variables x and y will give us a suitable Nathan normalization for r mod i. Okay, so if you do that here, then. Uh, we see that i, I does not change, i is this is the same as that, right? x square y plus x y square. Yeah, but in the proof, if you remember, the kernel needed to have something monic in y after the change of coordinates or the change of coordinates is, 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 is affected so that we get a monic uh, polynomial in y. But here there is only one change of coordinates that is possible and that yields the same f and there is not going to be any monic polynomial in this ideal, monic in y in this ideal. And so then uh, we can't do anything. Okay. So this is uh, an example of a, 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 a case where over a finite field, we are uh, unable to find a linear change of coordinates which uh, introduces a, or which gives us a monic polynomial in the kernel of that surjective ring map.
Okay, so the surjective ring map again what I mean is R surjects onto R mod I. Okay, but just the proof that we just saw if you instead of taking x goes to x plus y or if you take x goes to x plus some power of y it might work. Okay, and so uh, let us check that. So, here we change x goes to x, uh, x plus y squared and y is fixed. So, that call that psi and psi uh, of r is this and here is a monic polynomial in y. Okay. So, this is what uh, this proof does. Okay. I mean this proof says that this is always possible. Okay. And if you uh, think about uh, how uh, we uh, how uh, we constructed this polynomial which I will not explain, but if you think about why is the why is it that if you take this i we are unable to get a monic polynomial that phi of i is there is only one phi and phi of i is itself or phi of the generator of i is itself. Uh, then you would be able to do this in other fields also finite fields also. Okay. Okay, so, uh, that is the proof of Nathan normalization lemma. Okay, so, ju now just uh, yeah, so this is by proceed by induction now sorry okay. uh, yeah. So, now uh, uh, what uh, we want to uh, understand is ok. So, we have uh, so k uh, k uh, let us say k is a, uh, a case of field ok. We will come back to algebraically closed in, in little later and r is a finite type k algebra ok. And uh, this means that by Nathan normalization there is some uh, polynomial ring some some z 1 to z d polynomial ring such that this is a finite map ok. In particular it is integral ok. Uh, okay. So, now let us uh, uh, we Uh, we uh, yeah so we would like to understand so this gives a map from spec r to spec a okay. in this particular case it will also give a map from maximal spec of r to maximal spec of a but that is a difficult theorem which we will not attempt to prove or okay. uh, at least in specific examples maybe we can work it out uh, uh, in the exercises but uh, in general it is not easy I mean one need that needs a proof, but it gives us a map like this. And uh, so, we will we continue our discussion about integral more integral extensions and finite map uh, which will prove that fibers of such a map are finite. They are uh, so, this is uh, so if you think of the if k is algebraically closed then uh, we can think of spec of a by its uh, uh, maximal ideals and uh, maximal ideal corresponds to point. So, we can think of this as some space k d. So, at least if k algebraically closed ok. This is ok and this is some 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 x ok. So, x maps to this this is what the picture is ok. The points in this one is, is some subset of let us say k n. So, some subset of k n variety maps onto k k d uh, we will prove uh, uh, in the, uh, this lecture or the next that this is actually a finite uh, the point uh, fibers are finite we will prove also that this is surjective. And uh, so, then uh, we would like to understand so, we could use this as a way of understanding x ok. So, that we want we want to pursue now a little bit. So, uh, morphisms and then uh, if you have finite or integral morphisms what do their fibers behave uh, I mean what can we say about their fi about their fibers okay. So, that is the uh, next uh, uh, topic. So, before that we need to introduce a definition let r be a ring. The Krull dimension 
named after Krull uh, dimension. of R is supremum of L such that there exists a chain P0 inside P1 inside PL of prime ideals in R. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, this is what a cool dimension is. Okay. So, let us look at a uh, couple of examples. Okay. So, one of the things that we will study is the how dimension behaves under uh, integral extensions. Okay. So, we need, we need to develop a few more definitions, but let us quickly look at uh, 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 an example. Dimension of a field is 0, okay. this is a k field because there is only one prime, the maximal ideal which is 0 and hence it is uh, uh, 0. Okay. Dimension of z, so the only uh, to, uh, to start with the only sort of rings that we know are z, q and maybe fields that at least we know exist. At least, and dimension, we have to start counting from, I mean, if you want to build up something we have to, uh, for, a, for an algebra, we have, to, we have to start measuring it from somewhere. Okay? So, now what about dimension of z? So, there are only two types of kinds of primes, only two kinds, prime ideals, sorry, not primes, kinds of prime ideals, 0, or the ideal generated by p, p a prime number and these are also maximal. Maximal ideals are exactly this and hence therefore, dimension of z is 1. Uh, so, a cool dimension is just written dimension and now there will be a little confusion. Uh, often we will uh, uh, we will have to look at k algebras and we will have to use the word dimension to mean its vector space dimension or cool dimension. So, in that case I will try to be consistent with the following usage where for vector space dimension I will call rank and dimension would mean cool dimension. Okay. In any case if there is a confusion I will clarify. Okay. So, dimension z is 1. So, which means I mean this is a always a, a chain and you cannot do anything better, I mean you cannot insert more elements here or here or in the middle. Okay. So, you cannot uh, extend it any further. Okay. So, similarly dimension of r equals 1 for every p id, okay. same argument uh, maximal ideals are generated by irreducibles and though the only prime ideals are either maximal or the 0. So, any chain will look like this. Okay, so, this is one, uh, one, uh, uh, one definition, I mean one, one, one example and another, so just a half example, the other half is what we are struck, we will struggle quite a bit to prove. So, we will, uh, if k is a field, then dimension of uh, k adjoint x1 through xn is at least n. Okay. The reason is the following uh, that 0 properly inside x1, properly inside x1, x2 the ideal generated by all the variables this has length n. So, this is a chain of primes. Okay. And there is no immediate way that one can insert things in between or extend anything to that. This is already a maximal idea. So, you cannot add anything here, you, can add, you cannot add anything to the left, this is already 0. 
and uh, these have uh, uh, so these are not uh, I mean in between this there's no uh, one cannot insert anything but uh, remember the uh, definition is of dimension is uh, supremum of uh, such chains so we will work a little bit to prove that dimension of this is equal to n but that requires some work that there is no some other chain of primes that will go into some other maximal ideal with greater length okay. and uh, uh, so one of the uh, uh, I mean, there is some 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 difficulty uh, I mean, we will face some difficulty uh, uh, in proving it partly because we don't actually know the the structure of spec we don't yet know the structure of spectrum of this ring okay. so that's the thing. so uh, this is the end of this lecture uh, in the next lecture we will dis start dis uh, discussing further properties of integral extensions and then uh, uh, we will slowly uh, pro uh, so then uh, we, we will have to spend time understanding cool dimension more properly and that's what we will uh, do <laughs>